Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be talking about binning. This is a process where we take continuous data and convert it to categorical. So we start with a continuous feature such as age, and we convert that into a categorical feature such as age range. So essentially, you can think of having multiple bins, and you can label bins by some grouping. Okay, so the grouping is totally up to you, but let's say we group these in tens. We might have a 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and uh, 70s. All we have right now is 50, 30, and 70, so I'm only putting these up here, but you would bin for every single group of tens. Then you can just visualize taking these values and putting them in these bins. And then what your new data is, is what bin each one of these goes into. And this is very interesting. It's a very important process in machine learning, but I find it interesting because generally people in computer science don't like to lose data ever. Once you lose data or change something, it's very hard to go back to what you had. So this is actually a destructive process unless you keep this data separate and just copy over the values. Otherwise, you are going to actually destroy these values and lower the usefulness of the individual data. So you gotta be very careful here. So to illustrate this, we are going to write the new values. You can see there's actually a loss of information by going from continuous to categorical. We now no longer have the ones position for these values. It just seems like, why would that help us at all? We actually lost information. But the information becomes much more useful. So why is this more useful than this? Well, we actually do binning all of the time. Even in our head, we just might not think about it. And I'll give you an example. Let's say we have this guy here. Whoa, I'm moving up. I'm, I'm up to 2D drawings now. I guess I've always been on 2D drawings, but no longer stick figures. Okay, and I tell you this guy is 56. Does that tell you anything? And by the way, let's think of the context of predicting whether he's likely to have diabetes or not. Okay, well, it doesn't really tell us a whole lot. But in your head, you might go through some processing and say, huh, this guy, you know, this guy is greater than 50. And according to our data, People over 50 are more likely to have diabetes, for example. That might vary depending on your data. In this example though, 50 years and older are much more likely to have diabetes. Sorry guys, if you're over 50. Okay, now this makes sense. <laughs> We're starting to get information by losing information. <laughs> we bend this guy in our head into a category. Once we have categories, we can predict what's going to happen for individuals. See, that, that's starting to make sense. So if you can take your data, group it, and then see the end result for those groups, that's going to be more effective. To drive this home one more time, if we just left it at 56, well then, the only thing that we could really do is look at 56-year-olds. What is, what is their chance of having diabetes? That is much harder to do and not nearly as effective. We do this in programming all the time. For example, if you did something like this. Here is an example of binning, where you take an if statement and you have two conditionals, if age is greater than 50 and age is less than 60. That's saying age is between 50 and 60. Later on, we're going to learn a data structure called a decision tree, and this is going to show how important categorical data really is, because this is going to branch a bunch, and the higher the cardinality, the more complex this decision tree is going to get. So, the less cardinality, the more simple things are going to be for machine learning. So hopefully that makes binning nice crystal clear. And that's all I got for this video. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.